Again, he is joined by Wade Taylor the fourth with 25 points, moved up to seventh on the A&M all-time scoring list tonight. Manny Obasaki scored 22, including the team's last 16 points of the first half. And Tyrese Radford, the 10th tournament double-double in program history with 20 points and 10 rebounds. We'll start things with a statement from Coach – well, actually, we will not start with a statement from Coach Williams. We'll have questions for him in just a moment. First, we will open it up for questions for the student-athletes. If you'll raise your hand, and we'll get a microphone to you, and you can give your name, affiliation, and the student-athlete you're directing your question toward. We'll start right in front of us. Yeah, Travis Brown with the Eagle. Uh, Tyrese, it seemed like y'all were playing a little bit different defense, trying to prevent them from getting the three-point. What, what kind of did y'all y'all change? What was the emphasis and what was effective in kind of keeping them at least at bay from what they normally shoot at the three-point line? I don't think we changed anything defensively. We just played with our uh, HOH, hands over our head, and um, because they got really good shooters, and we just tried to prevent them from, like, going off or getting hot, you know. Um, we knew there was a good team that was going to make a couple shots, but all credit to the team just by staying in it, you know. Uh, what was the uh, – what, what did you see there late in the half that, let, that made you go off? Uh, I'm just thankful for my coaches, my teammates for trusting me. Uh, they gave me the ball and allowed me to do my thing. Um, I know I had a mismatch all night, and uh, they allowed me to take advantage of that. So, uh, yeah. We're going to stay uh, in front here. Mitch Davis, the Mitch Davis Show. Guys, last uh, Friday night, you were in Nashville. You silenced the Big Blue Nation. Tonight, there was a whole lot of Nebraska fans out there. You silenced them as well. Does that add a little bit of extra motivation? Talk about that and, and kind of the motivation factor coming into the game. Um, we kind of just turned off that channel and focused on um, the guys that rode the bus with us and flew on the uh, plane with us. That was our big objective, just um, keeping our circle small and not try to participate in the, uh, things outside our circle. Going to our far right, Eric Strickland, 93.7 The Ticket. Um, how you doing, Buzz? Good to see you. <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, this is for any of you, whichever one decided to answer this question, and it, it doesn't matter. What was the idea of taking Rink Mast out of the, uh, the game in this, in this, in this particular game? Uh, you guys were really double teaming him hard, and your rotations were really crisp coming out of that to get to your shooters. What was your idea and your game plan on that to take Rink Mass out of this game? Um, he's a really good player, for one. And uh, our credit to our coaching staff. Um, they prepare us at a high level, and uh, we knew that if we uh, had effective traps uh, whenever he posted us up, we would be, we'd be good because uh, high hands and our cover two and a high nail, they did a really good job with uh, – taking care of cutters and things like that. So uh, credit to the coaching staff and credit to us to you know, taking care of business in that end. Other questions for the student athletes? We'll get a mic right here in the second row. Hi, Olin Buchanan with uh, Tex-Ags. This is for Wade. Um, hey, Wade, when you, uh, when you have a big night, is it, is, do you ever get the – is there ever something that happens early that, that – makes you feel like you're going to be able to have a, a really successful night or is there um, you know any feeling anything that in th that that goes on for you that kind of gives you this idea that, that that's going to be a big night for you um, I just would probably say the consistency in our work um, we work every day the same way no matter if we have a good game or a bad game um, my teammates have been phenomenal on both ends um, I feel like the circle and the camaraderie we have together um, plays a huge part in how we come out and perform each night. So um, just credit to them. Uh, batted field, actually it was five here at Memphis. This is for Wade and Manny. So Wade, obviously you start out the game hot and then Manny, you start cooking in the first half for both you guys. What's it like when one guy gets hot and then it becomes both of you is kind of going back and forth, hitting shots at will from wherever you want. How much fun is that? I think it's, um, it's great to see Manny um, floors how he's been these last couple of games. Um, we see each other work out every day. We work out every morning, um, and we just know how much work we, we got each other put in, um, and that opens up the floor. If I'm coming out cooking, as you say, and um, they start helping on me, uh, that opens the floor for Manny and Boots, and also our forwards. So just playing off each other, trusting each other is probably the biggest thing so far. Yeah, um, it's been fun playing alongside Wade. Um, it's been an honor. Um, I've played against him since the fourth grade, so. <clears throat> Just seeing his game and seeing him, you know, succeed at a high level makes me happy. And uh, I'm just happy that I'm able to join him, you know what I'm saying, in Boots as well. On the aisle here. Uh, Mark Passwaters with Rivals. Uh, Mo and Boots, this is for you. Uh, 
about the 10 minute mark of the first half, you guys really started to drive to the basket. Um, was that something that was planned early on, or did you got like you said, you had realized you had a good mismatch all night? Um, that's my game, um, putting pressure on the rim. That's my game from jump um, ever since I was young. Um, and talking about Manny, um, like you said, he had a mismatch the whole night. And uh, once we see that as a team, we try to play through him, and uh, he just lived up to it tonight. Going right in front of me. Mitch Davis, so guys, all season long and, and postseason play last weekend and this weekend, you guys have seemed to be like a brotherhood after bad losses and big wins. You have each other's back. Talk about the camaraderie that y'all have across the board with each other and that relationship you have, that bond that you have with each other. Um, I think since uh, this summer when we got back together, it's been a brotherhood. Uh, I don't think we let the losses and the wins change um, how we treat each other. And I think that's why we're doing what we're doing today, because of the brotherhood that we have. So uh, we're just going to keep that going and see where it takes us. You stay up front. Uh, Travis Hunter with the Eagle for, for Wade or Tyrese, really any of you. Uh, I, what does it mean for, for y'all to get your first NCAA tournament we get win and one for, to get Buzz's first NCAA tournament win here at Texas A&M? Um, I mean, it feels good. And we're going to try our best just to live in the moment for, as long as we could. But, I mean, the, just like I told the team in the locker room, the job not finished, you know. Uh, yes, it feels amazing to, to win. It's an honor even to be here, you know. But we just can't get stuck on this win because we still have a – uh, long tournament ahead of us. Any others for the student athletes before we let those guys go? Guys, we'll let you head nice. to the locker room. Congratulations. We'll Thank see you here Sunday. Nope. Now we will open it up to questions for Coach Williams. If you raise your hand, we'll get the mic to you. It's on your side of the room. Uh, we will start to coach to our far right. Uh, Terry Davis, Tri State Defender. Coach, uh, you start this season. You started the season hot. You finished the season really hot. How close are you, this team getting to where you want them to be? Yeah, I think we're going in the right direction. Um, I think this is our 29th week, and there's been a lot of volatility. Uh, some of it we could have controlled better. Some of it was out of our control. But I think there's been great resolve and great resiliency within the group. Uh, these three guys for sure, but even the guys that um, maybe wouldn't have an opportunity to be here or come to the stage, uh, they've had great belief and they've had incredible ownership in what we do, how we do it, and maybe most importantly, why we do it. And so we understand that it's a winning loss type of business, but um, I, I want to make sure that I'm held accountable that the lives are um, judged, so to say, in hopes that we're changing it for the better. The next two will be right in front of us. Uh, Coach Mitch Davis from the Mitch Davis Show. I talked to you, uh, I think it was Thursday after the Ole Miss win in the SEC tournament. You did? About, Thanks about, for coming. Absolutely. I'm we played good you. that day, too. Oh, man. You coming Sunday? Planning on it. I uh -huh. live here, Coach. I'll be here oh. for you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, you talked about how proud you were of your team after that win and the tenacity that you guys showed, you know, in that SEC tournament, and now you're carrying it over to this regional here in Memphis. Just, Coach, talk about that and your toughness. I mean, defense has always been really good, but then now offensively, you guys put up the most points you've pretty much scored in the NCAA tournament. I think they've just done a good job of never letting an event become their identity. And I think that's really hard to do in 2024. Um, we were six and four uh, with a huge win over Tennessee, and then we lost five games in a row. And a lot of things transpired outside of our control that we learned a lot from. And I think even though it doesn't make sense to lose five games in a row, I think the lessons that we learned watching what transpired was uh, maybe a catapult to what has happened this month. And um, we're, we're, we're thankful, joyful. Right in front of you, Coach. Travis Brown with the Eagle. Uh, Coach, 
what what piques your interest more? I know you haven't seen the tape yet, but what piques your interest more in this win? The way that y'all were able to shoot the ball, or the way you're able to de defend the three in that last 30 minutes? I, I think they're really good offensively, as I mentioned to you yesterday. Uh, Coach is a savant offensively, and I never thought we were in a really good rhythm defensively in the first half. Andy was – it's probably Andy's worst game of his career at Texas A&M. Uh, solo's in foul trouble, four's in foul trouble, and as you know, you've seen most of the games. We don't have the maneuverability to absorb all of that. And so <clears throat> our offense has been uh, so up and down that we, we can't rely on our offense. We're happy when things go good and when we make a shot or when we get fouled, but our, our, our reliance has to be on our ability to get stops and finish with a defensive rebound. And I, I never, I think we only had one turkey in the first half and we would get two stops and then foul. We never got to the bonus in the first half and they were in the bonus at like six or seven minutes. I think they had 13 or 14 points from the free throw line at halftime. Those are bad numbers in what we judge. And so I, I thought the plan was right. Uh, I thought the coaches were phenomenal in installing the plan. I think our preparation was really good in regards to the execution of that plan. But we're playing with a lineup out there for a lot in the latter part of the first half that we hadn't played in forever. I thought Jace and Henry were game changers. Um, and they led us not only towards the end of the first half, but also in the second half. Stay, please. Oh. Then your, uh, your, what's your emotions after first win, NC tournament win at A&M? Uh, faith can't just talk, it's got to walk too. And um, I think this group is walking out the faith in one another. And uh, that's uncommon. Uh, they're uncommon people with uncommon character. And they have walked out the faith in one another despite all that's transpired over the last five weeks. And without arrogance or without ego, I think that um, you, you, don't, you don't gravitate um, to the standard you request you gravitate towards the standard you set. And I think we've all kind of, I mean, you, you're hearing what they're saying. I mean, uh, that's, that's great maturity, despite the, the fanfare, that they've walked that faith out in one another. And uh, it's scarred my heart in a way that I'm very thankful for. Just uh, to our left, Coach, in the front. Kennington Smith with The Athletic. You referenced the one turkey in the first half, but yeah. the last eight minutes of the first half, your team was able to pull away. What was kind of the difference in that period versus the first 12 minutes where it seemed like y'all were both for trading shots? Yeah, I, I think we were just offensively, we look, we look good. And uh, we're not used to looking good. And so we're a little bit of Jekyll and Hyde sometimes offensively. But I, I didn't think... Um, the game plan per se uh, is drastically impacted when Andy doesn't play, who's um, among the best in the country at rebounding. Solo's in foul trouble for the largest portion of the first half in a long time. But I thought that Jason Henry gave us some steadiness on the glass uh, on both sides of the ball. Uh, really big defensive rebounds. Henry was great on the offensive glass. I, I just think in that segment that you're mentioning, we we just happen to be good offensively, and we're <laughs> because we we're, we're not used to it. We we don't really pay much attention to it. We're just trying to see if we can do better defensively. Uh, we're inside our final five minutes. He right in front of us. Jason Munns with the commercial appeal. Um, Is that in Memphis? Yes. Where does your team's unflappability rank on the list of qualities that this team, positive qualities that this team has? And then, and then also, there was a couple of times in the second half where you were pretty animated. You were 
jumping around and uh, pumping your fist and stuff. Uh, how, mu how much fun was? What? I'm just their biggest cheerleader. Um, I, I think sometimes coaching is overrated. Relationships are underrated. And I think that um, what I try to do is just love them well. And included in that responsibility of loving them well is telling them the truth. And everybody says they want to hear the truth until you hear the truth. But what I respect about these groups, this particular group, which goes to what you're saying, they receive the truth. They don't resist the truth. And true love doesn't have an agenda. And so if included in the responsibility of true love is telling the truth, that means you have to tell the truth when things are hard. Uh, when maybe in their sphere, they're not hearing those words. Maybe on social media, they're not hearing those words. But if on Team Bus One, they know that the truth is required and it's received, no matter who says it, right? It, it can't just be me telling them the truth. They have to tell me the truth and I have to receive it in the same reciprocal manner. And I think that that's what makes uh, the recipe such an intangible, like, how do you articulate that? Uh, I can talk around it, but I can't really put my finger on it because it's so intangible. But it is around what I believe true love is. Coach, we're going to our left, and then we'll finish down front. Brent Swarneman, Houston Chronicle. Hi, Brent. Hi, Buzz. Did you what, drive here or fly here? Drove. Good Love that you. drive. Love seeing the countryside. So what went into scheduling Houston in Houston, and does that familiarity, if that's indeed the matchup on Sunday, do you like that, not like that, or so forth? Well, uh, I think coaches is, is the best example of what a coach is supposed to be as a man and as a coach in the country. And I think he's been that for decades now. And uh, obviously I've known him since I was a kid and I hold him in the literally the highest of regards, personally and professionally. For whatever reason, he's always been very good to me. And no matter where he's worked, uh, whatever the name of the school was, how they operate has always been the same. And for him to do it uh, over the last 30 plus years at places that it's never been done since, and at places it's never been done before, just speaks to who he is. And uh, I love the fact that all them guys that are running around coaching with him now, most of them started as students with him. Um, I think that in some ways, that's the way life is supposed to be. Uh, if that's who we end up playing, I'm gonna go out there and watch them. The way the schedule turned about was, um, can we find the date? Can we play at the Toyota Center? Is the Toyota Center available? I think that their complexion of their roster has changed somewhat. I haven't been able, you know, once you get into conference play, uh, the coaches that say they watch a lot of games, I'm just not smart enough to do that. The only games I'm watching are of our next opponent. And so I really don't know much, but I do know that there is some familiarity with what they do, but it's really how they do it. Um, they're the second number one seed because of how hard they play and how competitive they are uh, and how every single thing that you try to do is a tug of war. Last one in front of us, Coach. Coach, I, I have to go back and watch the film of one of y'all's games. So when did you ditch the three-piece suit? Superstitious? And are, have you brought a suit on this trip? or do you? No, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, it's the first time in my career that I haven't worn a suit. And... That's important to me. It's probably more important than it should be. I know that everybody wears to games what they wear to practice. I try not to do that. But when we lost five in a row, we were trying to do anything. Uh, I was making coaches shave. I was making coaches get their hair cut. Uh, I was trying to shave and get my hair cut, wear something different. And, um, and, and it worked. And so there is some level of superstitious with it. I think we've won six out of our last seven. So I'm wearing the same shoes, boxers, socks, jeans, undershirt, and pullover. That's probably, my wife would say that's too much information, but we need to find the cleaners in Memphis 
because they're wet after every game and I'm making everybody wear the same thing over and over, which I've never done. But I'm not saying there's causation and that's why we're winning. But in case there is, that's what I'll wear on Sunday. Coach, congratulations on the win tonight. We'll see you guys Sunday.